This is Take Two. Hello and welcome to Take Two, a semi-weekly show offering critical analysis and contextualization of those films which, for one reason or another, have not made it onto the main feed. This is a space for us to talk about short films, about shot-on-video films, about direct-to-video and direct-to-DVD films. On today's episode, we'll be talking about the February 2000 film Juon, The Curse, the first film in the wildly popular J-horror series Juon. The shitstorm of scariness begins now with Huan, the Grooge. Juon. Haunted House Simulator. Strategic Operations Simulator. Tactical Espionage. Action. Tactical, tactical. That's the best. That's the tactical, best. Subtitle. Tactical Japanese boy action. Before diving into the meat of today's episode, um, I'd like to take a moment just to sort of outline how I sort of approached this this film approached this series because my understanding of the Juon series is as a collection of particularly good haunted house films. I understood that the director studied under Kiyoshi Kurosawa, director of films like Cure, Pulse, and Seance, a film which we'll actually be covering on this show sometime soon. I think that it's fair to say that Kiyoshi Kurosawa is one of our greatest living directors, and his influence can be felt in the pacing of this film and in some of the shot compositions. Juon, The Curse, is also the first V-Cinema film which we've covered on this show. V-Cinema is the name of the Japanese shot-on-video movement, a style of filmmaking which I am wanting to learn more about. I'm learning more about shot-on-video in America and Canada at the moment through books like Bleeding Skull, but I am curious to learn more about shot-on-video in the non-English-speaking world as well. One of the things that this show has sort of proven to me is that independent cinema, like truly independent cinema, is one of the most exciting places for me as a critic. It's it's one of the places that I feel I can learn the most. It's also the place that I think it, it also produces the films which I think I will have the most to say about. Now then, I had talked last episode about my experiences growing up with J-horror um, and with this series in particular, but I had talked more about it in relation to the Ring series, um, the ways that I had thought that I had watched The Ring, but instead what I had actually watched was the American remake of The Grudge. I also talked briefly about how I was unable to, to finish that film. I had watched maybe 10, 15 minutes of the thing and then had to shut it off. It was just, it was far too intense. Um, and I'm happy to tell you all that very little has changed in the intervening... Uh, <laughs> 20 odd years due on the curse is the most frightening film that we have covered on this show it might be the most frightening film that i have watched i had a very very visceral reaction to it um i found it quite hard to finish even now i had originally intended to watch the film as i normally do just in, in one big chunk, taking notes as I as I sort of go along. And it became very clear within about five minutes that I just was not going to be able to do that. I made it to the end of the first story, Toshio, and I just, I absolutely fucking folded. I, <laughs> I absolutely just gave up. And instead... I decided, okay, I'm going to have to watch this in chunks. Um, I'm not going to be able to just sit here and just blast through it the way that I have with every other film up until this point. And instead, I decided that I would watch it in short pieces. That's one of the, um, one of the benefits of this being an anthology style film is that you really can just watch, you know, one story at a time and you're not going to be missing out on too much. So instead, over the past six days, I have been watching this film, um, watching it in, in, in little bursts on my lunch break um, and in bed before I go to sleep, which that was a mistake. I have been having just the most awful night's sleep this week. It, it has been real fucking rough. 
thanks a lot, Jew on the Curse. I really didn't expect this film to affect me quite as strongly as it did. I think that one of the reasons is that it is obviously drawing up some sort of previous emotional distress, which I had felt. Um, obviously, when I watched the film as a child, I would have been oh, maybe eight, um, if I had to guess. I'm not doing the math right now, it's not important, but I, I had watched it far too young, um, certainly. And it absolutely terrified me then, um, and, and rightfully so. As a child, this, this film would absolutely freak you out. But I, I would have nightmares about it. Um, I, would, I would frequently um, have problems going to sleep because I would picture Kyako at the end of my bed or like standing off in a dark corner and things like that. Um, you know, a lot of people picture when they're, you know, thinking about you know, monsters at the end of their bed or lurking in the shadows, they picture, you know, something sort of maybe amorphous. But for me, it was very clearly, nope, that's Kyako, and I am just not fucking here for it, thanks. And so obviously watching watching this film now, it obviously drew a lot of that back up for me. It brought a lot of that back to um back to the surface. But I still I had not anticipated feeling the way that I did watching this film. This film is genuinely excellent. I, I want to get that out of the way. The way that I'm talking about it, it might make it sound as though it's... I don't know. I don't feel as though I am doing a great job of conveying to you sort of how this film functions. I, I don't think that I'm going to be able to talk a lot about theme or even cinematography or score or anything like that because the way that I watched it was not optimal, and I will admit that up front. But even so, I would very highly recommend this film. I would I would certainly recommend that, if you've got the stomach for it, that you sit down and you watch it, because it is a pretty incredible film. The way that it creates scares is really brilliant, um, and it creates them using almost nothing. At least at the beginning of the film, director Takashi Shimizu, he uses a lot of um, a lot of empty space and a lot of just sort of subtle sound effects to build up the scares. It's not until about the third or fourth story in that he starts to really crank up the levels of, of gore and of special effects to, to create the scares. But by that point, the film already had its hooks in me, and so it really did feel like a pretty extraordinary escalation. The sound that Keiko makes is just ingrained in my memory as a as a child, as a child, a way of like freaking me out that my mother would do would be to just do the sort of like that groan that Keiko does, the that little like uh, from the back of her throat. And man, hearing it now, it just, it still hits. It's so, oh, it's, it's so upsetting in just a really visceral way. And Toshio as well, the way that he, like the, the sound of shrieking cats that he makes is also just very, very deeply upsetting. I had said that my understanding of the Joan series is as a collection of particularly good haunted house films and I think that that holds up I think that that is probably the best way to sort of talk about these films is is as haunted house films they're working in that particular mode despite my aversion to the films I am curious to watch more of them to see sort of how the curse develops I know that at least in the American grudge films. I don't know if this is true of the Japanese films or not, but eventually the house is burnt down and this ends up actually freeing the curse. So no longer do you have to enter 
this particular home in order to receive the curse. Instead, it instead acts out somewhat randomly. And I'm curious to see how the filmmakers sort of deal with that. Um, I'm curious to see whether or not that raises the raises the intensity of the film. I'm, I'm curious to see whether or not that makes them more or less scary for me. I'm also curious to watch um, films like White Ghost and Black Ghost, um, which, if I understand correctly, are they're films about a similar curse, but not the specific Keiko Toshio curse. Um, and so I'm curious to see what the filmmakers do with that. Truly, though, this is the first time on the show that I have really regretted undertaking this this task of watching these films in um, release order because soon enough I'm going to be watching Jew on the Curse 2, which I'm not looking forward to at all. Come season three, I'm going to be watching Jew on the Grudge, and then in, oh, what year is it going to be that I am watching the American Grudge 2004. So season five, I'm then going to be watching the American Grudge. And I am just, oh, I hope that these films lose their potency. I hope that I am less affected by them as time goes on. But I really, I, I don't know. I am really, even now, I am still very, very upset with this film. Um, I am recording this in the spare room of my house and there is a wardrobe here that is eerily similar to the one that uh, the character of the second story of this film gets sort of pulled up into. And I'm not liking it. I'm not liking looking at it. I'm also reminded of a house that I uh, sort of moved into as a teenager. Um, my... My family moved around a lot. Um, I grew up primarily with my father and we moved basically every year. Um, but one of the houses that we moved into, when we were moving in, we were loading some stuff into the kitchen and inside of the cabinets, there was what I believe to be insulation, but what, what looked like hair. Um, it looked like black, like long hair that was growing out of the inside of some of these cabinets. And it, it just, it fucked me up. Um, I hated looking at it. And so I would try to avoid going into those cupboards as much as I could in order to, to not have to, to look at it. So much of my of my life, um, so much of the things that I am afraid of now were influenced by watching The Grudge when I was far too young to do so. And so it's going to be interesting, I think, revisiting all of these films um, over the next however many years that it takes for me to, to complete this project. I think, though, that will do it for today's episode. Thank you for, thank you for listening to me sort of just ramble on about this. Um, as I said, I don't think that I've done a great job of conveying to you how this film functions, but I think that I think that it, it's certainly worth watching, um, and I hope that you will take some time to, to go and check it out or to, to check out any of the films in the Grudge series because I do think that they're very interesting films and I think that they are certainly worth your time. I would like to thank Yanka Glonis for the use of her track Axe Murderous off of the album Fun Time Party Gal. A link to that album and to their Bandcamp can be found in the episode description. If you have any comments or queries regarding the show and you want to get in touch, you can do that on Twitter at MostMaligned or via email MostMaligned at gmail.com. If you could, please take a moment to leave a rating and review on your podcast platform of choice. I would really appreciate it. We have just uh, gone live on Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher. 
Um, so those are three new ways that people can listen to this show. So if you have family and friends who um, you would like to share this show with, you've now got a few more options available to you. Next week on the main feed, we'll be discussing the first film in the Final Destination series, a film that I'm very excited to cover, um, one which I think will have kind of the opposite mood uh, to to this episode. That film is, I think, very, very funny, very tongue-in-cheek, um, and so I think that it will be good to watch that after having watched Duon. It's a good way for me to just sort of relax and de-stress. In two weeks' time, you'll hear from me again on this feed, and we will be covering the second film in the Tomie series, Tomie Replay. This will be the second Junji Ito adaptation that we have covered on this show. I'm very excited to talk about this one. I have only seen the first Tomie film, but I had a lot of thoughts about that film, and from what I have heard, Tomie Replay is a lot better. Um, so I'm I'm very excited to finally sit down and to watch that. Until then, though, this has been Take Two. Thank you.